The Naval War College was, owes its creation to the vision and persistence of one man, Stephen Bleeker Luce. Almost a century and a half ago, young Lieutenant Luce was assigned to the Naval Academy faculty. And there he realized that his branch of service was not providing the training or education in key professional areas. The Naval Academy, for example, had no text for seamanship, so Luce wrote it, and it stood as the U.S. Navy's standard for 40 years. War is the central issue around which the professional of arms exists, and there was then no ex existing institution where a naval officer could study it. Thus, Stephen B. Luce persuaded a reluctant Navy department to establish the Naval War College in October of 1884 making the name of the institution into a constant daily reminder to students and faculty as to the purpose and the focus of its work. His age, like ours, was a time of rapidly changing technology, periods that some are fond of calling a revolution in military affairs. Then as now, the main focus of professional life was on technology and science, on metallurgy, on applications of electricity, on the chemistry and physics of weapons, and a host of related matters. What I have said is this. What happened then matters now. All of you here today are part of a continuing story. There's been 127 years since the founding of the United States Naval War College. Ladies and gentlemen, the 53rd president of the United States Naval War College, Rear Admiral John N. Christensen. Good morning, Naval War College. It's a real honor to be here today. Each of us has arrived at this point along very different paths. The cut and color of the various uniforms provides evidence of the many military services and the many nations that make our amazing college. The cultural, religious, and ethnic diversity of this gathering is unmatched on any campus in the land. And yet, from such diversity will arise one entity, a company of scholars with common goals and common purpose. Our graduates leave this institution with an increased ability to make enlightened decisions in times of stress. You will be absent from the fleet, out of the cockpit, and away from your troops. Some of you will be away from family and friends, and all will miss periods of operational experience that are critical to your warfighting skills. But the benefits of your studies will far outweigh the costs. Today's ceremony begins our academic year. It provides us all the opportunity to focus the attention of both students and faculty on where we are going. The main battery of this institution is its education mission. We are committed to providing the best possible environment for learning. You will be given two gifts, a library of great books and the time to read them. Your time spent here as a student represents a change of pace. Freedom from the demands of an operational schedule and meeting endless commitments. Your orders are to read, think, write, and study. Do that and I promise you will be changed forever. For every student enrolled here on our Newport campus, eight others are engaged in study on our 20 satellite campuses around the world. Through our fleet seminar program, our partnership with the Naval Post Graduate School in Monterey and our web-enabled and CD-ROM courses, nearly 5,000 students will participate in the coming year in Naval War College study through our outreach initiatives. Raise your sights beyond the platform level and focus your vision on what lies ahead. You men and women will lead your services and nations into the future. Think before you speak and read before you think. Your investment will be repaid, and you will join the tens of thousands of our alumni who look back with great memories of their time here in Newport. We are now honored to present the 2011 award to a truly inspirational leader, the Honorable Clifford L. Stanley, Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness. Secretary Stanley, a retired United States Marine Corps infantry officer, served 33 years in uniform, retiring as a major general. His last active duty position was as the Deputy Commanding General, Marine Corps Combat Development Command, Quantico, Virginia. His other leadership positions included Commanding General, Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, 29 Palms, California. Director of Public Affairs, Headquarters, Marine Corps. Assistant Deputy Chief of Staff for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. Commanding Officer, 
1st Marine Regiment, desk officer in the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense, East Asia and Pacific Region, advisor to the Secretary of Defense on POW MIA affairs, special assistant and Marine Corps aide for the Assistant Secretary of the Navy and instructor at the U.S. Naval Academy. Secretary Stanley also was a White House Fellow where he served as Special Assistant to the Director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Secretary Stanley's demonstrated leadership and his professional accomplishments will now forever serve as an inspiration to all Naval War College students, the very purpose for which this ward was established. Good morning, everyone. I want to first of all thank you, Admiral, uh, for this honor and Mr. Pelletier, thank you very much. And of course, the foundation, Admiral Weschler, uh, Mrs. Weschler, Mrs. Christensen, and the children. And of course, uh, I want to obviously the staff, the faculty, um, the students in particular, and all guests who are here. I'm uh, truly humbled, obviously, by uh, not only the honor, but um, you have to understand that uh, as, as I went through the program, this is not what you think about, right? This is not what you think about. Um, I've spent my life caring very, very deeply for our people and the conditions of our people. And then sort of by nature of the times that we grew up, you made decisions and choices. And one of my choices at that time, and this is like 1969, so some of you may have been like either not here or just coming. <laughs> but you make that choice to, to join the military. I joined the Corps. And actually, I was in Army ROTC. So Army, don't be upset here now. But what happened was I had some fraternity brothers who didn't really take it as serious as I thought they should have. It was very local. It was in South Carolina. And I was pretty serious. And I said, okay, I'm going to do something a little different. I didn't realize how different it was, but I said, <laughs> I said I'm going to do something a little different. And in that process, uh, like so many of us, um, it was, wasn't even about a career as much as it was about actually just serving, um, you know, doing it honorably and everything. And I, I have to kind of describe it metaphorically like it was one carrot at a time. Uh, it was, I mean, I didn't really, I don't know when I crossed the threshold of the career, but it was like um, next assignment, next assignment, and next thing you know, you're at five, six years, and you're kind of like saying, well, you know what I'm saying. And it was sort of like that. Um, and even as I got to the point of being pretty senior and long in the teeth, you always had options. But one of my options, and I guess my options were matured by, I was always a student. And guess what? I'm still a student. I'm still a student. And every opportunity I had to do this, oh boy, I loved it. I really did. I actually enjoyed sitting there, listening, engaging, reading. I'm, this is one of my War College classmates here. <laughs> we went to the National War College together, and Vinny is up here, I think. Another one of my National War College classmates. Um, we just enjoyed it. But there was something else, too, because just as I referred to Ms. Bunn and, and Vinny here, we made a whole lot of friends. So that became also part of the process. I mean, so what you're doing here this very special year, and those friends were, you know, American as well as international. They were kind of like all hues. And so when you went overseas, you ran into them. Or when you were, you didn't even see them, but you, you were now, this is the waves now coming through the phone. And you hear the phone and you, hey, I recognize that voice. Hey, John, is that you? And it was. You know what I'm saying. Okay. And then it made things all the better because you knew the person on the other end. You knew how not only they studied, but you knew their character, you knew their essence, and all those things. I looked out and I smiled. I saw Dr. Charles Chadbourne. You thought I forgot you. <laughs> but I remember S&P, strategy and policy, like it was yesterday. And I remember shortly after finishing his program, his course, I remember 
I was an aide to the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, and uh, uh, Mr. John Harrington took me to, I want to say, is the Bohemian Club. He just took me there because he, he said, Cliff, all I want you to do is to make sure they just see you. Just be there. Just be there. And well, they're going to be talking about a few things, and then you're going to tell them about the Peloponnesian War. <laughs> 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 then you're going to talk about Thucydides. Seriously, square business. He said, because a lot of times they kind of think that, you know, some people in the uniform, military, don't know this kind of stuff. And then you're going to kind of hit them with a little bit of finance. Seriously, I'm, I'm not making this up. He said, just, just be in the room. That's all you got, just be in the room. But what I'm alluding to right now, though, is a very special phenomenon about warfare and war fighting. Because what I'm doing right now is just as much a part of war fighting as what I may have been doing early on. And we take the mission seriously. That actually been somewhat of a shock to some in the Department of Defense, OSD. All right? Because I take this stuff seriously. Every day. Now, I've been blessed because I don't need a whole lot of sleep. Seriously. I don't. I don't need a whole lot of sleep. I can get about four or five hours, something like that, and sometimes even breaking that up. And I'm good to go. I learned that when I was Mike Six, and I was actually out Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, doing something, and we couldn't sleep that much. We had to do those operations, you know, for like, you used to operate like a week at a time, you know, just go out in the field, you stayed in the field. Went home on weekends and went back out in the field and you stayed in the field. Even during the gas shortage, because we went through the cycle of this, this economic time, we've been there, all right? We don't know how this is gonna turn out, but we've been there. But I remember we didn't have the gas for the trucks, so we walked to the field. All right, seriously, we got there, and the terrain was flat, so as you know, those, the difference between Camp Pendleton and Camp Lejeune is flat terrain features, and you're going to road junctions as opposed to at least some hill mass. And what I'm alluding to right now, though, is something very special about not only your sleep ethic, but also caring so deeply about what you're doing, that no matter where you are, that mission comes through loud and clear. You could be studying S&P, you could be doing finance, you could be doing some elective course, it makes no difference. You could be talking to someone else, but everything we do is the measure of the other person and this human factor that we're dealing with, because why are we fighting anyway? We've always been fighting, haven't we? This has been a part of mankind. The homo sapien has always been at this thing of this profession of arms. So we talk about Clausewitz, right? You want to see, you know that big book, right? You're going to read all of that, <laughs> every page. And it's going to be like earmarked and tapped. I'm serious. Look at it. Refer to that book because it's there. Sun Tzu. Huh? Because even if you don't think you're at war, if they think you're at war, you're at war. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. This is so special. Gosh, I wish I could just stop the clocks in the hands of time because it goes by too fast. Admiral, you know what I'm talking about. This thing goes by so fast, it's unbelievable. Enjoy the sweet nectar of not only life, but just an opportunity to fellowship, to get to know each other, to get to know your faculty, the staff, your fellow students. I mean, that's really so special. And then not only that, not only within these walls, it was already alluded to, but also what's happening outside of this edifice, what's happening in the community. All of this and all of that will not only make you better officers, but better husbands and wives and brothers and sisters, just better people, all of that. Because that's what this is all about. Our lives, as those who serve now in harm's way and those who may not have served in harm's way, is a nanosecond. I learned about 36 years ago when my wife was a victim of a very tragic incident where she was shot and paralyzed. She was pretty young. I was pretty young. And we were at the Naval Academy then. But it also just kind of reminded me then of this frailty of life, of just how fast and just what happens. And so make every moment count. And so that's kind of been my philosophy for a long time, even before then. It's been my philosophy every day. It's my philosophy right now. I just, every single day, every moment counts. Being a student for life counts. You're blessed. I congratulate you on being here, being selected, 
I congratulate you, and as General Wilhelm said, who was also one of my bosses, I congratulate you on just being here, what we would call the Ivy League of our war colleges. I'm proud to have been a graduate of the Naval War College, but I'm even more proud to have served and to continue to be able to serve in some small way, and I view it that way, very small way, because at no time when I walk in that Pentagon do I think that I'm more important than you or anyone else I'm serving. I'm a servant. And being a servant, you don't get too hung up about your rank, do you? When you care about what you're doing, when you care about your troops, you care about where you're going, you're caring about making sure you take care of them, they come first, the other stuff comes kind of easy. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to wish you all the very best. And may God continue to brace you in his warm embrace. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will sing together the service songs of our nation's armed forces. <laughs>